Finals time. Week 4. On this beautiful old school map. We see the good luck have funds coming out of team uh, waking up to the smell of coffee. And a single good luck have fun there from Kalazur. The liquid member, very mannered of course. It is a ZVZ here to start with between the old timers and waking up to the smell of coffee. And we'll have to see if there's going to be any shenanigans. I recall on this map at times we saw people take their third base at their natural to, to try and trick the opponent. We even saw a third base initially, uh, or sorry, a hatchery at the third base and then a triple hatch before pool at the own natural. Lots of trickery as this map is rather small for the overlord path. You do get to see everything quite quick. Okay, what do we have here? Gas going down on the side of the old timers. And at the same time, uh, yeah, there's complete mirror builds here. Of course, the the players in the driving seat most likely going to be Elaser and Lambo. Curious to see what their plans will be in this mirror match. I know Lambo is a player that has a lot of builds up his sleeve usually, but also doesn't scare away from a, a well-timed all-in every now and then. Elaser is a player that often trusts in well, his ability to pick a build order that is winning here. He, he loves playing aggressive. He loves doing weird stuff. He's a big fan of the Mutalisk as well as a unit, but also just as a concept. And he just loves using anything that is slightly unorthodox. We might see something uh, also something of these influences in this game here on King Sejong Station. Of course, we have these backdoor rocks in the natural. I don't think they'll be playing a major role. You have the third base kind of far away from the natural, but still in a safe position. And then the fourth base is usually where things go pretty wild because these are quite far forward. The forward fourth position, of course, does come with a couple of nice ramps, which usually ends up helping out in the defense. But you also shouldn't forget this type of rotation, right? A bunch of roaches over here, then start marching towards this, uh, these rocks, take them out, and all of a sudden you're open from every side and you might have trouble defending as the defensive rotation from fort to natural is about as long as the aggressive rotation from fort to natural. <clears throat> and that is something that uh, needs to be kept in mind here. And as the early game is getting underway, I think it would be wise to uh, see what the good old timers have going on in their communications channel. Uh, now you can check the ramp on the other side because the queen is going to inject in a little bit and you check if there's a Benny Nest or not. Okay. There's a Benny Nest? Yeah, okay, okay. Now go back. Just keep those alive and you're going to scout for the rest of the game, basically. Okay. Seems like Showtime is on scouting duty there. At the same time, uh, whoever it is on. Uh, waking up to the smell of coffee from now on referred to as team coffee will be <laughs> is also doing a great job with the scouting honestly um, well, actually they're not aware yet of the bailing nest should try to poke in their uh, nose right now see the evo chamber go down at the same time as well it is a tricky opener here both players keeping it cool getting these drones out as fast as they can Overlords are being built, and this is usually where we could see some type of switch ups. We have the layer being built before the first upgrade, usually indicating some type of Mutalisk play. If these two are reversed with the upgrade before the layer, that often suggests Roach play. Now, this is a fake uh, plus one upgrade, and this is a fake Roach Warren. I say that with a lot of confidence, but I do not really have it. I'm curious. Uh, if uh, if anything got spotted there on the side of Team Coffee, what are they talking about right now? They're getting their own rotor and their own carapace, but are they aware of the lair? Take some more zerglings from me. Me? Not all, not all, not all. Okay, yeah, I like this. Yes, good. Okay, I'm starting to make roaches. Mm. They don't seem to be very aware of anything whatsoever. So they're not speaking at all. Layer is going to finish up here for... Uh... Ooh, this is going to be a, a carapace all-in, isn't it? Yeah, Layer is going to finish up. We should see a Spire go down quickly, perhaps. Mm. Did the old-timer spot something that worried them, perhaps? They're starting... Well, they are starting a Spire. A couple of Roaches also uh, starting to build right now. Guess 5 and 6! And guess 6, I think, got spotted here. And that is pretty darn early. A big round of drones right now. 
And now's a great time to go towards the communications of the old timers to see how they respond to this push. And check, check, gas timing at the, check gas timing at the third. A bunch of no, Ling. Launch no, 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 Ling. Launch no, Ling. No, Ling. Comes across. It's in the Ling. One Bane Ling. Looks like one, yeah. No. No gas at third base. It's really bad because we were going to meet us. Spire does get cancelled there immediately. Lambo stating that this does not look too great. He's not going to be happy once he sees that the carapace is done as well. Double spines, no, excuse me, triple spines in the natural right here. And that third base is in danger. At the same time, I don't think that third base is going to be where the defense will be. Bane Links trying to get the connections with its opponents. Bane Links, good piles being thrown down. Good control so far out of the old timers. They might be old, they might be slow, but they do know how to throw them piles. This overlord is being pushed away. Is this going to be good enough if just the third base gets taken out? All the drones will survive. I think at this point the old timers might actually be regretting cancelling that spire. No. Oh no, oh no. Team Coffee is moving into the natural. There's still three spines there. But is there enough units to hold off this absolutely massive roach force? Bile raining down from the sky. The roaches move in start fighting these drones a lot of drones going down right now five six seven nine drones on the way at home as well for team coffee as they're going to be picking up their first win here in the grand finals of the Harstam archon tour oh yo 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 36 workers going down and the old timers are going to be checked into their retirement home here lambo leaves the game without the gg gg out of kalazur showtime leaves as well that is three players and a single gg as Team Coffee takes game number one. Nice. We, we fake them. Yeah, yeah it's good. It's nice. good. Because we blocked the scouting and and I transferred a lot of drones from natural to the third base. Uh -huh. And like if Lambo was looking at it, I think he would know, but uh, he probably got the wrong info. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like they were like, ah, there's a lot of drones at the third. You can yeah, macro. I, I was starting feeling really confident when I saw they took the gases on the third. I was yeah, like, oh, too, yeah. Too. yeah, because I think I kind of messed up. Like the, the transfers were not very believable, I think, yeah. for a good player. Like Lam, Lam, if Lambo was looking at it, he would know. He was probably focused macroing. No, but yeah, it's, uh, I should scout myself for that because he starts to upgrade right away. So I, I would know because he usually doesn't do that. But it's okay. I think the Zerg is going to be the easiest to beat anyways. So let's go Protoss against Zerg, right? Yeah. And yeah, I think that's good. I think against Utherm, uh, having Protoss also would be nice, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I played a lot I, against uh, Elisa recently. It's been going pretty well, so I think we should be able to take it. Sounds good. Um, how how confident are we in the TVT against Uthermal? I guess that's that's another question. If it goes, if the... I hope it goes well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now well, they're gonna pick Terra. Yeah. So we I need guess... to veto. We need to veto like I don't know, Berlingrad. I guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. veto that. Well, let's go toss then. Actually, let's uh, just see what they only veto. plays Mac and TVT. By the way, I doubt the, I doubt he would play Mac and Archon. I'm sick against Mech. They veto Berlin, Grad. Let's so go like 2K think, maybe? You don't want Glittering? Uh, we can, uh, right, we can play that too. But uh, well, Crown isn't that amazing on that, right? So we would have to play the Voyager stuff? Yeah, 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 I mean. I think it's fine. Like, honestly, every time I played Miku, he dies to the timing. Like the free carrier, seven Voyager, Archon timing. So he dies like every time. <laughs> Okay, let's let's do that then. And then they should just get roaches. They overdrawn they massively, Protoss. I think. They they made sixty free drones. That's way too much. They pick Protoss and glittering. Oh, I like this. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna macro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. They're gonna play like Tempest late game, hundred percent. So Voidray into Tempest late game. Okay. Uh, does Showtime go uh, Voidray? Well, he usually goes Oracle, but I think they're not gonna do that. I think he's gonna be Voidrays. He he can do Voidray too. Because I know Lambo is confident in the Tempest late game. He's influencing so, him. That's good for us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, but it's, yeah, it is broken, so... Okay. <laughs> I mean, what I think is going to happen is we're going to win, then they pick max specs. We're going to get a PvP, then we have to win a PvP. And, I mean, we could also just win a PvP, actually. I don't, I don't see. Yeah, how no. about we do that? <laughs> Tobias is always beating max specs, so... I don't well, not always. Not. But, uh, yeah, it's like 50-50. Yeah, but 
you have to consider that we're a lot better than Elazer, Elazus and Euthermus Prodos. So. Yeah, but 50 50 is like a 80 20. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna go into Phoenix versus Phoenix, and I don't think you guys can do a whole lot because you just have the Phoenix and then you macro at home. That's it. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that looks fucking lame to me. We should just ban that beforehand. Uh, it's gonna happen either way because he plays one gate on every map. Like, we could try to play something else, but we're gonna play from behind than usually. You think he's gonna agree if we ask him to not play uh, Phoenix? <laughs> Phoenix I, versus Phoenix? He, 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 doesn't, like, he doesn't play anything else ever. Uh, okay, so that's not happening. I, I don't know. I mean, if he plays Skytos, there's no way. If if he plays ground, but all short time is also very good against Mutas, even with ground. So, mm -hmm. but maybe. I mean, it's it is Archon as a point. Like I would, yeah, but the thing uh, is, you, you guys have way more knowledge than me in this matchup. So all I can do is. You know, yeah, like I mean, Phoenix things. Phoenix is gonna be rough. Yeah, I mean, if it's not Mutas, then I'll just use Surflings, I guess. Yeah, like you bailing ground by stuff like that is very mm -hmm. strong. But yeah, feelings or things fucking lame. Yeah, we could try to play something else. Maybe it's possible in Archon. Because what happens is, like, Ego's gonna go one gate expand, and then he's gonna make Oracle if we don't play Stargate ourselves. And then usually that kind of sucks. But anyway, we need to. Avoid what happens him. if we go Stargate and then we just make an Oracle, or, or we like we force him to play Phoenix or something? Yeah, yeah, it can, it can work. Not a big fan of it, but it can work. Mm, okay. Well, let's win this first. We'll see. I will tell you what to do. Like my gameplay, my 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 plan for late game is gonna be Ultralisk and Infestors with Neural, because I think we can do a lot as Arkham. Because we can like split Infestors everywhere. Let's say like each guy gets like four Burrow Infestors with Neural and like a couple Ultras. Let's say two Ultras and some Zerglings, and you can just beat any army pretty much. Yeah. Game number two in this grand final. We are on Glittering Ashes. I believe the first time we are seeing this map in this entire tournament. Which makes it quite exciting. And I also believe we haven't seen Zerg lose yet when they were being controlled by Team Coffee. Waking up with coffee in the morning. The smell of coffee, I'm sorry. Their name is just a little bit too long. A little bit too long. Honestly, if, if I was the captain of this team, and I wasn't, I would have named it Max Pax and his Royal Guards, or just Royals, something like that, or the Prince of Denmark plus Company. You know, something, something make sure that people know that there's some real royalty in this game. Third base being taken here for uh, Team Coffee. As we have... Uh... Ooh, that's not going to be a gate scout then. That's cool to see. <clears throat> but some of uh, Lambo's influences are rubbing off there on Showtime. You have this probe uh, harassing the minerals a bit. And I actually believe that Lumbo is really keen on harassing on minerals. So I actually want to check in in their communications channel of the old timers and, and, and see if, if Lumbo is bragging yet about how well he's doing with this probe. I'm destroying them already. You can put some question marks in the chat, Diego. <laughs> Destroy their mentality. I'm going to do like four void rays and then go into carrier, like Zest mm -hmm. style. Yeah, that's good. He's probably gonna corrupt you, then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're doing well now. They're doing well now. It's because they're split. Oh, no, I got them. Yeah. L Lambo was a little bit happy. Are you questioning my Overlord micro? We actually saw... Uh, so there's two people dealing with this probe arrest. So one person is controlling these two drones and the other person is controlling the bottom patch. It's fun to see, actually. Uh, Needing two people to deal with a single probe. Of course, there's two potentially uh, mineral patches that can be attacked. So it's correct. It is correct. Here comes the first adept. It's not being chrono boosted. And I believe we might be opening up with a couple of void rays. This is a good map for void rays. I, I have to admit it. And after that, uh, th that failure in the, in the first semi-final that they played, where they lost to the Ravager, Ravager attack, Actually, did they end up losing? No, they end up winning, actually, didn't they? God, it's been so long. I just remember it looking really bad at some point. I'd be surprised if they go for the same Oracle build again. I really would be surprised if they go for the same Oracle build again. Yeah, there's no way, right? It's going no, no Chronos on the Adept usually is a bit of a tell. That is not going to be uh, a triple for Oracle. It could still be single Oracle to start with, but no. We see the Void Ray should be Chrono boosted here immediately. As we're marching uh, towards a third base off of two adepts here. That is that is just going to be the plan. 
And I like that plan on Glittering Ashes. It's a good plan. It is a plan that is going to provide us with a game that is most likely going to last extremely long. But it is, it is a plan I do enjoy. I think it's a good call here. Gateway being thrown down in the natural wall as well as this Void Ray is going to start fighting this Overlord. That's not a very fair fight. One person has a freaking laser beam. The other guy is... The other, well, the other one is slow as crap and doesn't have any weapons. Except that it's ugly, but that's not really a weapon. At least it's not a weapon that I've learned how to use yet. Otherwise I would be the strongest man in the world. Oracle on the way as well in the main base right now. We'll, uh, we'll pop out. And hopefully we'll get some damage done. So the Void Ray is also being rallied across the map. This is a risky move in case of 12 links showing up at this point. Could definitely do some major damage here. Double gas being taken at home for Team All Timers. <coughs> and here comes the Oracle. Okay, okay, okay. Oracle is going to get a little bit of damage. Well, a little bit of damage. Going to get two worker kills here. Well, that actually is just a little bit of damage. Oh, out of position though. Beautiful maneuver here with that Oracle. Queen's caught off guard. Royalty caught napping again. Oi, 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 oi. Team Coffee is uh, it's not going to be happy with that as an Overlord goes down as well. Are these Void Rays and freaking steroids today? Woo, woo. Forge being thrown down as well at this point, and we soon should see the extra gases being built. So there's a couple extra chronos on these Nexi. Nexuses. The plural of Nexus. No battery here, though, and not uh, too many adepts either. If these links get microed well, they could perhaps actually do some damage here. Not quite the case yet. Going for these probes. Oh, good probe control, though. Oh, beautiful stuff here. I'm loving this. The old timers are uh, showing that age is just a number. And they, they still have it in them. <laughs> they still have it in them. God, they're old. I think Lambo is like 27 or something like that. Pfft. It's like a quarter century. Half Halfway into the grave already. This guy, let me tell you that much. <laughs> this uh, layer is going to get... Well, did it get spotted? Actually, it didn't get spotted. No revelation being cast. Fort base did get spotted. And... The, the, the good thing is that I think Lambo and Elaser, uh, or well, Lambo is very aware of Elaser's playstyle usually, and he knows that this fast fort base means that there's not going to be a queen walk. There's some people that like to fake a fort base and then queen walk. Elaser is a person that likes to build drones when he has a fort base, and Elaser most likely is going to build drones. Now that doesn't mean that queen walks are completely out of the question. It's still viable, perhaps, to throw down a Spyrogo for a corruptor queen walk. I have seen that before out of E-Laser, and it is going to be possible here that Team Coffee will end up going for that. Spore going down 6 minutes and 30 seconds into the game in that natural. As there's no Spore here yet either, by the way, so high eco plays. And honestly, only 5 workers going down while skipping 2 Spores isn't that bad. Now, this, this Oracle, if he was paying attention, perhaps could have dealt a little bit of damage here in this third base. Now, needs to be careful that he doesn't lose to all these queens that are kind of surrounding it. <clears throat> Second Evo on the way. No, that's an infestation pit. My apologies. So eight gases are being taken. 87 workers with eight more on the way. If I would do math, I would know that that was 95 workers. That's what we're going for at seven minutes into the game. First three carriers are also on the way right now. And the fourth base is uh, uh, it's a little, little over halfway done at this point. Oracle still scouting. And once it sees that, uh, that hive starting... I think there will be a pretty decent clue as to what is happening. Actually, in this case, I would have loved there to be a couple of disruptors. Disruptors against a queen infester type of defense where the spire is delayed. Oh, let me tell you, disruptors are good, okay? If there are no corruptors, disruptors rule everything on the ground. And then voyeurs and carriers have nothing to be afraid of because the ground is being ruled already. And we do have some disruptors on the way at this point, actually. So that's the first disruptor coming out right now. 7 minutes 50. No gas is being taken. Up to 75 workers. Perfect worker count. I wouldn't want more workers at this point because that main is going to be running out soon. Oh, this probe transfer is a bit fast, but all right, I dig it anyway. I don't care. Void Oh my god, look at the creep. Look at the pre. Look at the Six hands. And how many two mores do we have? Is that a building, a two more or what? 
Six hands, 11 tumors. This is unbelievable. How many active tumors do we have? One, two, two active tumors. Even the one in the main base is not an active tumor anymore. That is how good the creep denial has been so far this game. This is absolutely crazy to watch. This is, this is really, really sick. This is some of the wildest creep denial in the world. No, Void Rays are gonna get caught, but luckily the recall is there in order to, to help out the poor Protoss player. Ooh, that's a cool animation on the Arc one. Look at that. That's a nice skin. Beautiful stuff. This Oracle still going ham. No cancel on that Spore either. We have 13 Roaches on the way. Neural Parasite as well as Buro. And no fifth base. What is... What is Team Coffee doing here? I understand what the old timers are doing. They're going for an attack. I still believe that two disruptors might be a bit too little. We only have three carriers as well. What? Oh, they believed it was going to be corruptors because they went up to seven void rays. That's a mistake here. Because six carriers would have been much better than, well, what is this? 20 zealots and seven void rays. I'm actually a bit afraid for them in this push. This could go very wrong if the neural parasites hit. That's a big first fungal. Oh, there comes the first neural parasite as well. But yeah, the disruptors against against investors are just so huge often. Uh, microbial shroud being used as well is actually useful for once. A couple of neurals here though. Oh, and these are extremely useful. This is not just a little bit useful. Archons are going to die. The carriers being pulled forward as well. Roaches on the left side kiting well against the zealot, and uh, a painful little loss there for. Uh, oh well, actually. For who was this a loss? Because at the same time the natural went down against these void rays. Did not look like... Uh, well, to be fair, I didn't see it. I'm not going to be blaming Team Coffee for this uh, loss. Two workers also end up going down. There's a lot of spores in this army. We have six investors. Three more investors are on the way right now. As well as tunneling claws. Oh, that makes sense. This is an Archon move here, my friends. This is not something that is common. And these roaches are not going to get spotted. There's no cannons in the natural. There will be a cannon going down right now in the natural and one in the main as well. Good call here immediately out of showtime after seeing that there is that, uh, that, that little added spikes on top of the roach. These fluorescent spikes. <clears throat> as this cannon will be taken out. A recall on this third base. That's not enough units. There's no observer with this army yet either. There's an observer flying around. These voiders are going to be really useful. Once again, taking out a queen. Perhaps taking out a second queen. There's no investors with this army. Will not be... Well, actually, all queens stay alive. At the same time. Ooh, talent carrier disruptor force. <coughs> be careful, my friend. You don't want to get caught. Oh, but the laser also doesn't want to get caught. Disruptors do end up hitting the queens. But the queens don't really die too quick. The roaches might get something done. A couple of roaches on the far right side as well, not being controlled whatsoever. Coaches on the left side are being controlled rather well. And perhaps it's actually the time to listen in to Team Coffee to hear what their thoughts are so far. Oh, but you Look at the roaches. Call somebody control the roaches. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Heard a panicked Elaser there. But uh, mainly quiet. So making sure that the multitasking is continuing here. But at the same time, it feels like uh, Team Coffee is just struggling and holding everything at home. They're only on four bases. Carriers getting neuraled. There is a disruptor in the back, but with no shot available. Five, six workers go down on the side of the Protoss. And these roaches are still alive. There's no detection with this army. But 17 drones go down on the side of Zerg. There is still some money in the bank, but I don't think that's going to be enough. Another investor. Can he grab this? Oh, no, he cannot grab that disruptor before it shoots. Now these carriers are going to get taken over, but the zealot force on the ground might just be a little bit too strong. Can we get a revelation here on this army? Can we get a revelation? I don't think we can. And let's hop over to the voice of old timers to see how happy they are with this potential win. And you have the icons of the natural again? Go. Yeah, I have it. There's a lot of spines there, though. So I'm coming help. with the void race to help you. Okay. Well, roaches can't do shit now. Uh, roaches can do very much indeed. Another neural on top of this arc on the carriers dealing too much damage. There's no anti air left. These roaches by your term are doing everything they can. And they're actually taking out a lot of workers. Don't forget, Proto's still stuck on three base. It's not going to be enough, however. GG gets called. 
And the old timers, no matter how old they are, take a game here on Glittering Ashes and tie up the score one to one in this grand final. I mean, it's a strong timing, but I don't know. He, he just, he never has enough against the ground whenever I attack him. He just has like a couple of roaches and queens and then the other, he dies to the zealots. Well, I think this time he kind of just lost his natural yeah, yeah. for a void race. So that yeah, was that's true. unlucky. I think he forgot like three voyages at home. I thought you took I did, them. I, but... I, I didn't realize. I thought you just made four and then the rest you oh, spent okay. into ground. Oh yeah, I didn't oh. realize. I used four the entire time. Three people in the arc and we still can't realize that. But yeah, lost the natural base. Then that zero run by, I think. I don't know. Should be fine for us. Mm -hmm. They said that one by didn't do anything. It was pretty close anyway, no? Like they never got a fifth because of low workers. Like yeah, I think I think it's mostly losing the natural base is the first yeah. problem. And after that, maybe I messed up some fights. Because we didn't really use our units properly. Like the roaches that I gave you, it was correct, but... Mm -hmm. I think I had too many roaches at home. For no reason. So I guess we play PvP? Yeah, I'm fine with PvP. Yeah, yeah let's go PvP. Okay. Yeah, yeah. what do we do PvP? I really don't know. I, it's, it's a stupid PvP against backpacks. They're playing Protoss? I mean, no, most no, likely, yeah. right? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Probably. I don't think uh, Utah wants to what, play against me. I mean, what, do you want to, uh, what do you want to veto against Max Pax then? Mm, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, well, if you get like Curious Minds or Blackburn, then it's definitely going to be very difficult to avoid Phoenix. On like the other maps, maybe we can play like a Stalker Sentry opening and... I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I mean I... You, you can just play Phoenix versus Phoenix, I don't mind. Okay. Uh, but yeah, just veto whatever you usually would veto against Max Pax. It's well, Black Blackburn, veto... Burning Red, Curious, Hardwire, 2K. I veto Pride usually, so I don't care about the, any of the other ones. Best of three, what do you veto? Uh, whatever, doesn't matter, honestly. Then maybe it's like, uh, something that's uh, bad for good for Terran. Yeah, then veto a good Terran map. Which I would say Berlin Grad? Mines or Berlin Terran map. Grad. Okay, I'm vetoing Curious Mines. Yeah, Curious Mines, you should get rid of that, yeah. I think this this game was close. If, and if I had like two Vipers, that would be also very good. The Voiders were the biggest problem. Honestly. I think that's why we lost. I mean, I'm just uh, wondering. If we're gonna play PvP, what we are gonna control each? I'll be doing the macro, but uh... yeah, I mean, honestly, you should you should do like everything and then just give like the extra task to us, I guess. Yeah, I can like run around with the proper on the map. Most of your PvPs, honestly, are just you expanding and then all ending, you know. And in that case, I don't even know what we would do. But yeah, like... I think it's either gonna be the, them all ending or it's gonna be Phoenix versus Phoenix was. Okay, That's I mean, yeah, almost... you're you're the leader in this one, so you should you should tell us what you want us to help with. Yeah. Vito's curious. I picked Blackburn. Yeah, right. I hope it doesn't come down to a TVT. <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm, um, I'm much more confident against Mark. Oh my god, of course. Well, yeah. there we go. Just, Mark is so wild. Anything can happen in TVT in the early. Yeah, but it's it's fine. I'm looking forward to it more than the PvP. Because the PvP is actually going to be fucking lame. <laughs> yeah. I, like it could be pretty fun, I think. Like Stalker Disruptor and like two fronts or whatever. But with yeah, that would have been great. And on this map, it's just gonna be Phoenix, and uh, there's only Phoenix on, on the map. There's nothing else really. Mm. Should be fun. I will ask them, gentlemen's gentlemen's agreement. Because the agreement. you throw me the laser also would rather play Stalker Disruptor, you know? Right. Okay, so um, so what's the plan? Phoenix Wars. Phoenix Wars. Phoenix Wars. We're gonna one get expanded to Stargate, I guess. Yeah. Make sure to tell us what we can do if you have anything for us. Yeah, well, I'll let you know. Okay. Mark, what's your MMR with Protoss? I, I haven't played in really long, to be honest. When you played? Uh, like 6-4, 6-5. Okay, okay, so it's much better than me. Yeah. Would you put it past them to agree and then just play Stargate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be lame. No, they're not going to do that. I think Max Flex does, just will not agree if he doesn't want to. He's a very like, straightforward yeah, guy. Yeah, but they have Nico on the team, you know, he might convince them. I've never seen Max Pax play anything but Stargate, really. I'm waiting for the, with the suggestion to you, Thermal Giant Slowly, so I can have an, an, another person in favor of it. What we could also do is we open Zealot, Stalker, Stalker, and then we kill the probe, and then we make a Stargate in the main base, so he's gonna go Oracle, and we make Phoenix, and then it's gonna go into more ground base usually. Or he's gonna play Skytos, that's also possible, like Voyager. But he kinda knows that trick, so I don't know. Okay, it's not happening. We're, yeah. we're, just play, just play whatever you think is best chance against. Okay. Don't, don't, don't care about how much fun we have. Uh, I can do a little workout while we're at it. 
it'll work out. I'm washing dishes right now, so just let me know when you need me. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, game number three here will be played on a Blackburn. After the Curious Mind veto, Showtime being afraid most likely of that uh, one gate uh, on smaller maps out of max packs. And of course, max packs still just picking a one gate map. And this is really the specialty of max packs, okay? This is, this is what he is here for. This is why, th this is what you get the PvP out for, to snipe Showtime. I think this was the initial plan out of Team Coffee is to use Max Pax's PvP against Showtime's Protoss. Because Showtime's Protoss is very, very scary. But Max Pax's PvP is even scarier. Uh <laughs> okay, you got it. Jesus is Elaser. Is Elaser often uh <laughs> Elaser often says that uh when he's playing CVZ he just trusts on Jesus rather than doing anything else. Just trusts in the powers that are that are bigger than him and hopes that he wins that way. Mark and Max play. <laughs> Very nice. In the in the lobby chat as well, Lambo asked for a non-Stargate agreement because Max Pax's absolute specialty is not just one gate versus one gate, but it's actually Stargate versus Stargate as well. Um, as we almost got a bit of a trick going on there. But Cybercore should go down though. Cybercore a bit faster here for team... Uh, what are they called? The old timers. There you go. The old timer slightly faster cyber core, so although they're they're old and slow, they're still quicker with their core, with their tech timing. Of course, they have more knowledge, so it makes it makes sense that they're quicker with the tech. <laughs> so the zealot is being uh, warped on both sides, and sometimes we see a zealot cancel out of max packs. By the way, he's very keen on this. Some good probe control as well here, and uh, this can get very dicey. We see that zealot. Well, ten more seconds on it. And Pylon, 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 Pylon is going to be built. That means that this Zealot will finish up. Stargate immediately gets thrown down. And we have a full wall here coming out of Team All Timers. Not wanting to deal with any type of Adept. We have a Stalker and a full wall as well coming here. Ooh. Is there going to be a Cancel on the Stalker? That could be a Cancel on the Stalker, yeah. Cancel on the Stalker for a Nexus, of course, makes so much sense. I love that faster Nexus, way more important than that quick Stalker. Third Pylon will go down as well, and we have a complete mirror. This might turn into a Phoenix versus Phoenix War. I was hoping that we might see some Stalker Disrupt and Stalker Disruptor sick action, but instead we're most likely just going to be seeing Phoenix versus Phoenix. But that's also fine. I also enjoy that. You know that? Yep. Phoenix is being built in unison here. What a game this is going to be. Second Stargate already on the way, though. Uh, everything has planned, <laughs> says Elaser. This is actually probably what they had planned. And I'd love to hear what the old-timers have to say about this game, because this has to be the nightmare scenario for Showtime. Phoenix, yep. Second going Stargate. down now. Yeah, amazing. Already <laughs> winning. Winning. I'll try to force a lift, I guess. It's about all I can do. I mean, I don't think it even matters that the probe is in there, no? I mean, yeah, you're gonna kill it with like the two Phoenix. Right now, we're just chilling. Now we're just chilling. <laughs> this matchup is so bad, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Old timers not sign sounding all too hyped there, but also not uh, too down. I mean, this is to be expected, right? It's both players taking a third gas right now, chronoing on that Stargate here for Max Packs. No chronos out of Showtime, though. Amazing. And funnily enough, I think this is the scenario in which uh, having three players actually matters to the least amount out of everything, as it's all going to be uh, about yeah this <laughs> as bad as messing Vikings in TVT. This is worse than TVT. <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably very similar because it's most of the time it just comes down to a single Phoenix engagement now. I know Max packs his theory a little bit. I believe he likes to go up to 12. Um, <laughs> 12 to 14 Phoenixes. Here we see uh, Uthermal bragging about his stronger Protoss operator. Of course, Max Pax. Ooh, Showtime is a Phoenix specialist. <laughs> yeah, sure, buddy. Keep telling that to yourself. Lumbo is on some... Uh, he's on a little bit of copium right here. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I mean, there's a lot of time right now. There's really not that much happening. Ooh, cute little move out of Max Packs there. Popping out. And at the same time, 
we have the exact same move popping out there with Showtime. Very cool. This probe's gonna go for a scout, making sure that there's a Nexus going down. Well, maybe even wants to take a fight here. Max Pax is down a Phoenix, but up five brain cells. Also down a couple of years, though. Okay, now it's gonna be up a Phoenix. No batteries here. No third base on the way yet. Max Pax so ballsy with these Phoenixes. Look at this. This is the kind of stacking that, I, that I'd love to have. 10 versus 10. 10 versus 10. Who dares to enter? Who dares? Well, no one does. So now we have the Zealot starting to take out the gateways. This is a full-fledged Phoenix versus Phoenix of ours. And every, every fight uh, can be the, the game-deciding fight. And most likely will be the game-deciding fight. Both players now want to be probably heading into the Phoenix range here. That Annie and Pulse Crystals. As we see Team Coffee up about three workers. Slightly slower any Pulse Crystals, though. Phoenix count remarkably close. Also, actually, overall gas count seems to be in favor here, perhaps. By, uh, by about 60, 70. For team... Um, for the old-timers. <laughs> actually, it has been pretty chilly out here. I live kind of close to your thermal. It's not been nice weather. It's been some rain. Lots of wind as well. Not a huge fan of that. And the Impulse Crystal is about to finish up. We see uh, Max Pax moving around with his probe. Getting the block on that gold base. As this gateway gets taken out on both sides. Just in time, of course, for that probe transfer. And the Impulse Crystals did get revealed there. So now... Well, uh, Team Coffee is going to be aware that that's the case. And the Impulse Crystals also about to finish up, though. Uh, for team coffee and then once again we have a complete mirror here on our hands oh here we go the first battle the first battle mm. three against one and this is why max Pax is the superior protos operator i have no clue what just happened here but he only lost one and he killed three oh that could have been that could have been very dangerous but it ended up being just fine <clears throat> up two phoenixes currently no third stargate on the way yet so we see a third stargate starting right now for the old timers oh here comes max Pax again gets a clean phoenix snipe and time after time he just manages to do this i have no clue what happens how he does it what is the magic button i do not understand but he's winning these fights and he's winning them hard oh that should be a trade that should be an even trade one for one but one for one at this point isn't good no more for the old timers as they're down two phoenixes they are up six workers and they're trying to work oh look at that a little bit of zealot micro here on the gold base See, Max Pax still confident in this control. Is going to take out two. Loses two himself as well. That's five down in these trades. How is that even possible? The superior Protoss operator does it once more. As I think he is winning this fight. 14 against 9. And I think... I mean, he's just going to keep pushing his advantage here now. He is going to keep pushing his advantage here. Up three still. Still one-shotting Phoenixes. Down a Stargate. No, actually, even Stargate right now. Oh, that was the fourth Stargate that I saw go down. That wasn't the greatest fight, though. No battery. 20 against 16. So overall, still win. Gold is being taken. Re will require less workers. Um, but give more minerals. Or even minerals with less workers. Well, here, more workers will be required. Of course, this base will also run out quicker, though. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. In this case, well... You win in the short term, you lose in the long term. That's life. Carriers on the way already. And if... Yeah, I mean, if, if Team Coffee gets to survive to the carriers right now, that would be a huge issue. That really would just be a huge issue. Let's actually pop over to uh, the old-timers and hear what they have to say about the situation. Are they aware of the carriers yet? I was gonna hope he doesn't attack now. I, I think he's gonna make the carrier himself probably now. Yeah, most likely. on our corner. So down. Well, not a whole lot going on in that conversation, I guess. If you're waiting for your carriers to come out, that's really uh, all that you're going to be capable of doing. First carrier is out, and we see an aggressive move out here. Whoa, Max Pax. I mean, Team Coffee. What is that? Just kind of uh, hugging the middle here. 
aggressive pile on this side as well. Of course, there's nothing really capable of killing it. As both players killed their own zealot. Which means that they didn't really have any ability to build another... Uh, or they killed their own gateway. They didn't have the ability to build another zealot. Still one zealot alive though. We'll be able to take this out. This could be potentially quite dangerous. There's three carriers out already right now. Three carriers out for Team Coffee and only two out for the old timers. Interceptors are going to pop out as well. Oh, this carrier is going to fall as it pops. This carrier will die as it pops. There is Guardian Shield, is there? Guardian Shield is available. Interceptors trying their best. Uh, they, the sentry just got sniped though. Now it's going to be... Yeah, I think this is over. I think this is going to be... Even with a super battery, this is not going to be good enough. A lot of the interceptors have gone down on the side of Team Coffee. But the Phoenix count is too high. There's no more carriers really fighting right now for the old-timers. GG gets caught. And the superior Protoss operator, Mr. Maxpex, wins this game for Team Coffee. And this is what he is here for. He takes out Showtime, puts his team on match point right now as the old-timers are getting closer and closer to their grave. Who the fuck flies into the main base like that? Wait, how did we lose the Phoenix fight? Okay, it was... We had much quicker speed, uh, range. I had the same Phoenixes. I guess we lost one more Phoenix on the other side, and then... Looks like we lost two more Phoenixes on the other side. We lost two more Phoenixes, yeah. So we were down two Phoenix. <sighs> <laughs> Good job, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting nervous since Phoenix was yeah. getting off. All I did this game was like optimize mining with the probes pretty much. Like I would see like there's like one probe on a mineral patch, I would improve that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's also very good. Yeah, I was just yeah, making right. pilots and trying to scout, that's all. Yeah, like there was nothing to do. And the, I lost the Zealot, actually that was very bad, I just sent it across the road. So now they have to pick Chiron. Yep. I'm always clueless what to do in this matchup. Yeah, it's... Let's think about it though, what could be the best strategy for Rodos using a Terran and Archon? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Phoenix could be very good. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm not that confident with going Phoenix. Yeah, you don't play it a lot, right? Yeah, Oracle could also be good because uh, you can control the Oracle. Yeah, I don't know. Oracles are a little bit tricky though. Like if you're not used to dodging widow mines and stuff. Yeah, like, I feel like it, it goes wrong pretty fast. Yeah, yeah we could also just very uh, scary, yeah. void way all in. <laughs> I mean, that was the lamest game so far today. Uh. No, and we have to play this all the fucking time. It's so annoying. That's interesting <laughs> how come you guys are not complaining about that and the well it's like a map it's, it's like a map thing unfortunately well the map and the max packs thing right but if max packs can do theoretically everybody could right yeah, yeah. what what map do you want uh, diego what do you think tobias this is max packs but well, uh, we have both berlin and curious though well let's see what he vetoes he'll probably veto curious minds mm, yeah they're probably berlin right i think so to like a cheeky proxy repo on it yeah can, can you? Can I don't remember if you can wall up with two buildings there. No, you need. I mean, you need pile and two buildings. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's gonna do that. He might though. Wall they the ramp, act. Reaper ramp. Yeah, on the yep. cliff. You think there's any chance they scout for proxy? That would be worst case scenario, because then we just lose the game. Mm. I, I don't yeah. think it's that good because uh, they can control both the Viking individually and uh, the cyclone mm -hmm. and the marines. They might panic though. Yeah, uh, how that's do, true. Um, how does Kellizer normally play against you? Wait, can uh, we he, do he, can we do the proxy void way actually? Yeah, we could. He skips the raven. He skips the raven. Yeah, I don't know why. I I ask him why he does it for them. Do you think proxy void way would be a problem? Like we could control this quite nicely, no? Mm. I guess we could. I think we we wouldn't do a better job than a protos alone though, right? You think? Yeah, I think I mean, we can like split units. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's quite literally just someone controlling the void race. Yeah, and I agree. Terrans can do some things better. Like the, Terrans usually send something to counter, like a Reaper or you know anything, and that will be yeah. micro to perfection. And we're just like watching one of us micro the Void Ration. Well, he, he's probably gonna scout at the triangle base, right? I think that's pretty common. Yeah, but we don't have to put it like super aggressively. So you mean like the conservative? Okay, conservative proxy Reaper. Yeah, okay. I can show you where Mauro proxies it. His uh, his barracks. Sure. And what do you and want to for the follow up? Well, I, I'm not really too familiar with the follow ups. Uh, there's Widow Mind Drop, there's Straight into Cyclone. Uh, what does he usually do? Like Stargate, I guess? Yeah. Well, I mean, Mike Specs, sometimes he plays for a Gate Blink follow up. Really? That would be really lame to play in Archon mode. Mm -hmm. and, and Forgate goes... Blink? It's not lame in Archon mode. It's a good story. Archon thread, no? What about Forgate Blink? Yeah, what about that? Is it. Do you, do you, would you like it for Archon? 
I think it's very good if you can uh, if you put four stalkers in the warp prism while the mm -hmm. other one is attacking in the front yeah. or on glittering ashes where you can split up two squads of stalkers in the main and uh, natural. Mm -hmm. That could be good, but uh, there's no glittering. That's me the curious mind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I pick burning rod. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Like I think if you put put a proxy at like the the linear fourth base also, there's no way he's gonna scout it, and you can go into the natural and stuff. And then we build a bunker there. I like that. I mean, we can try to build a bunker. Right, yeah. Nico asked Max Flex when do we start playing last game? And Max Flex just said, please let me focus. <laughs> Maybe that's, that's why he was lost, because we kept... Uh, yeah, that's... Him. <laughs> that guy is... <laughs> A beautiful pro split is what we just witnessed here on the top left side. Now the team Coffee was up two to one. And on match point to win the Harstam Archon Tour Grand Final. The first of perhaps more to follow. But first, they will need to win this. And it's not going to be easy because in the bottom right, spawning as the Red Terran is the old timer, Skelazur, Showtime, and Lambo. And their experience tells them. That once they're behind, they need to start proxying some buildings on the map. This SCP makes its way across the map. This is a particularly be pretty, a particularly beautiful, a, a, a cool little uh, position for this barracks because it allows the jump on top of this cliff. And that is exactly what you want. You can get a, uh, a bit of a shortcut here in towards the main base. If this does get spotted though you can throw down a pylon here and you can you know probably buy three four extra seconds which is useful it's not going to be the end of the world for the procs here but <clears throat> it's still going to be useful we see the well, what is this it's probe being sent down is oh this was a 12 pylon wasn't it this was a 12 pylon 13 gate and i missed it this is a great opener against the proxy by the way this is a great... They're going to scout it, but I'm not sure if they will see it. I would like to listen into the old timers right now to to see if they understand what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. You guys just do the repair micro then, okay? I will, I will. Okay, spotted it. He did scout it all, right? Yeah. So there's not going to be a Zealot. Is he going yeah, for the max specs? Could be. Well, yeah. no, 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 no. He has 19 pylons, uh, or 12 pylons, yeah. so don't put the bunker, I guess. Ooh. Yeah. That's actually kind of annoying. It's, uh, it's like that is like out pretty much now. Maybe wait until he shades out. I don't know. Very good call there out of Showtime. Immediately recognizing that it was 12 pylon by the timing of the Cybercore. Saying, hey, don't put the bunker down. This is the correct call. And this indeed also is a little bit annoying. Actually, it's a bit more than a little annoying. I love that they're hiding the Reaper though. Recognizing the situation, knowing the timings. And now this Adept is on the map. The Shade finishes up. Great play here out of the old timers. They might not be fast. They might not have a heart rate anymore. But damn, do they have a brain. Absolutely fantastic play here with that Reaper. That is what you get if you put some of the brightest minds of the scene together. Great. Absolutely great play. Two Reapers still on the map here. Mine gets built as well. Starport in the main base. And the command center on the high ground as well. Oi, oi, oi. That was great. That actually, even though it only got one worker kill, that would have been no worker kill otherwise. And one is always better than zero. Small little difference there, but... It makes all the difference. And that's really what matters. Adapt across the map also means that there's not going to be any mining on the low ground here for Team Coffee. And um, although it has been a bit of a, uh, a build order disaster, well, a build order wise, it has been a bit of a disaster. I think the execution so far shows me that there's still some life in these old fellas. So the Reapers are now microing against the Adept. Of course, if you have one person microing both Reapers on practically zero ping, which I assume that this is. Oh, this might be Lambo doing it actually. Hmm. I think Kalazur, with Kalazur's Reaper Control, who I believe is has one of the best Reaper Controls in the entire world. Um, and yes, I'm even including Koreans there. I, I do believe you would have been able to deal a crap ton of damage on this Adept. But I bet Kalazur currently is busy with uh, executing the build order. Armory is on the way as well. Robotics facility here. Post Blink. That's kind of late. Interesting to see Viking gets built. Um, why that is the case, I do not know. Because there's no way you're going to get Stargate with this. I think that this Viking needs to be cancelled. This is a terrible call. Oh no. Not a Viking. Cyclone as well. They're misreading. They missed the Twilight Council and believe perhaps it's a proxy. But they see the warp gate timing. 
Oh, this is a this is a, this is a disaster. Build order wise, this has been disastrous so far. Did the Viking get cancelled? No, it finished up. Does the Cyclone get cancelled? No, it's going to finish up. These mines are going to get a couple of kills at least. And we got an Umbro on one of the mines. Um, perhaps they get a second shot even. I'm not quite sure if this Observer is going to be in time. Hmm. Decent retargeting. Medivac is going to get out. No, it's not going to get out alive. Perhaps it will. Perhaps it will. Another worker is going to fall. Actually, the old timers once again. Getting a done a bit more than perhaps they ever should have this mine is going to shoot that was three kills the mine in the main is going to shoot oh gets the stalker and two kills and this bad boy is going to be ready in what like five seconds might get another kill here no does get killed 10 workers though great start although the build order was terrible for them they ended up getting a cyclone and a viking which both of those are going to be completely useless at the end of the day i believe they have a pretty decent situation carved out for themselves here Triple Rex is out already. First tank is on the way, which means that this prison pressure is going to be doing nothing. Viking will start moving well, around the map. I still believe this Viking will be completely useless. And if this Viking deals any damage whatsoever, I will be shocked. And I'll have to make my shocked face. And that's fine. I, I had to make my shock, shocked face before. I think that, yeah, okay. They just got spotted. Good caller out of E-Laser. Spotting that uh, and immediately pinging it. Very cool. Second tank on the way as well. If this pressure does anything whatsoever, I'll also be slightly surprised. I mean, two tanks, Cyclone as well. Well, actually, Cyclone is useless, but let's pretend like it will have any purpose whatsoever. Ooh, the old-timers do believe that this is a four-gate blink. Get a... Oh, hoo, 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 that's your observer, mate. Um, get a bunker on the high ground. Tank's not in the perfect position. Here, the Cyclone. No. What a surprise. It's going to do absolutely nothing. This Viking... Oh... Another huge surprise. It's going to be doing nothing as well. Man. Who could have seen that coming? At the same time, it, wait, did these adepts just kill freaking six workers? I guess in combination with these uh, blink stalkers in the main base, actually managing to deal a bit of damage, huh? That's cool, that's cool. That's right, that's right. No third gas yet, no fourth gas either, meaning that attack is going to suck massively. Bio uh, units aren't out in large numbers yet, though. There's not a whole lot of mining going on on the, the old-timer side. And who needs money if you have so little time left, right? <laughs> who, needs, who, need, who needs money? They're just enjoying their time on the world. While they're still, while they're still around. <coughs> they're gonna be getting uh, one more tank? No. Popped out uh, their final tank already. And they'll go for perhaps a 3-rex push here. Well, this prism is, is not going to succeed. This cyclone also is not going to succeed. Because this cyclone is not going to succeed at anything in life. This cyclone is useless. It was a mistake. Should have stayed in the factory, mate. What do we have? Nine marauders. Thirteen marines. Three tanks total. I mean, if, if the old-timers manage to march across the map without any major issues, this will be very good. However, if they're going to get picked up, because these are a crap ton of stalkers, an epic amount of stalkers here, and honestly they're trading quite well. Is charge done yet? No, it's not, but soon will be done. I think they got spotted. I don't think this was the call. I don't think... Ooh, tanks are sieging up on the low ground. Yeah, this is such a slow process, and like, th these units are extremely overstimmed. Medivacs are... Well, at least one medivac is running out of energy. <clears throat> these other two still have a decent amount. We're going to need to see another stim to push this back, most likely. No. It's not necessary. Observer here is useful. Scan on the third base sees the lack of extra gases. Immortals being built as well. Plus one might actually finish up before this fight. And eight gateways are here as well. Are there any units at home? No, they're not. There's just the Cyclone. And the Cyclone will kill the Observer, which is nice. But uh, well, it needs to start doing something at home. These Marauders get stimmed at the same time. This push, brilliant force field here out of Team Coffee. And I think the old timers are struggling to stay alive. The Grim Reaper is catching up with them. And they don't quite have the speed anymore to run away. Oh, yo, yo, Prism in the main base. Cyclone, no way, gets the Prism. Beautiful. Beautiful Cyclone movers. We see two drop depots. How do you get supply blocked when you have three people playing? I do not know, but it did happen here. Third CC on the way as well. Turret on the low ground. Feels like... Uh, with the control of Max Packs, under the command of uh 
the Prince of Denmark, that Team Coffee, is having uh, just a brilliant time. 30C extremely late, nine minutes into the game. Robobay already on the way. There still is three tanks, but there's a, a crap ton of zealots at this point as well. Sure, it is a low gas count. Sure, it's a large charge lot count, which is not going to be super useful if this bio number grows but we're working with three barracks only that's going to be it that's almost no production whatsoever there's a huge gateway forge here on the top side there's a huge huge gateway forge here at the third base as well there's a small run by near the third but there's no third yet it's not done <clears throat> before the third will finish before the third will land the game will practically be over as these colossi will be marching out soon here comes kalazur with his tanks the old timers going in full steam on absolutely everything to catch what? Two zealots? Is that worth it? Or should you perhaps just have stimmed half of your army? These are the questions that people will ask in the future. When they will be looking back into this game. Wouldn't mind checking in with the old timers to see if they are still capable of thought at this point. Can I take a little bit more units on the third medic? Yeah. Because I, I might be able to actually surprise him uh, at the top. And we can't really die anyways, right? <clears throat> that's a cough. Lumbo still uh, sounds alive. But that's about all we're gonna get from these guys. Ay, 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 ay. Plus two here on the on one of the Ebays. And plus one armor on the other Ebay. So double Ebay. A standard Kellys remove. He loves to do that. Gets a very well upgraded army on low eco. Three tanks at home. First Colossi is already out. Second Colossi on the way. Thermal Lens on the way as well. The control on the top side is good. A couple of these zealots will end up falling. What is this stalker? A single stalker harass. That is Elaser. That is extremely Elaser. Actually, let's hop over into the... Oh my god, the Cyclone. Let's hop over into the communications right now of Team Coffee. Can they taste a victory yet? He's making Vikings. Two Vikings. Oh, I, I think it. we can be aggressive. He has, uh, he has siege tanks and vikings. Yeah. Do we have temple archives? No. Oh, we are doing DGs. Okay, he's yeah. patrolling it here. Yeah. I think I think he's like AFK right now. He's waiting for max out. Or... Can I have all the stalkers? No, no way. Yeah, just no. careful with tanks. Yeah. Oh, uh, pretty big army on the top. Like three medivacs roughly. I need some units here. If his army is here. Yes, we to, uh... All right. Well, very interesting as the army size actually is growing here right now for uh, the old timers and their upgrades are about to finish. So they might be working with a small upgrade lead, at least temporarily. Ghost Academy on the way. All of this before a fort base, by the way. Good army split out of uh, out of Team Coffee here, to be fair. It's been very good. They just have been playing some really good Starcraft. They really have been fantastic in this best of five today. All of these medevacs will get picked off, and now we need to see a big push. But the tanks at home, the Vikings at home. What are the chances, right? Fort base finally gets thrown down 13 minutes into the game. No plus three attack on the way. Vehicle weapons are coming, though. And we'll see if these ghosts are going to be useful whatsoever. Once again, triple medevacs here towards the, the far right side. A decently sized army as well, moving towards the left. Oh, uh -oh. Seems like Team Coffee smells blood in the water. And this is a pretty decently sized army. Is there... No, there's no blink yet on the Stark Templar. It is being researched right now, that Shadow Stride. Do we have any DTs whatsoever yet on the map? DTs, of course, not as useful if there's only three bases. Their main purpose tends to be sniping planetaries, because there's things that can't lift or move. DTs aren't great against moving objects. Shadow Stride is being researched. No extra upgrades either, by the way, for uh, for for Team Coffee here. It's the old timers continuing their upgrades into plus three. Low worker count for Team Coffee. Staying on five gas this entire time. Not feeling the necessity to get that higher gas count, but good luck getting any type of DT count of a five gas, mates. How's that going to work out? I don't see it. I don't see it. <coughs> this army's going to... Well, it's not going to stim. It's not going to really do much of anything. 12 o'clock is a nexus being built. It's the fifth base, of course. This command center's flying over towards... It is it's out of position, isn't it? Am I crazy? No, I'm not crazy. That's out of position. And that's a fair amount out of position as well. That is a solid hex. 
towards the left. That is two hex. No, this is wrong. This feels wrong. This looks wrong. This is wrong. Even in Alabama, this isn't allowed. Ay, 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 ay. This Nexus might get cancelled. But this planetary is going to... Yeah, it's ridiculous. This looks silly as well. It just looks off, you know what I mean? It isn't correct. Lots of drop action, though, all around the map. And uh, it feels like with these little drops, or little drops, these little move-outs, um, it feels like the old-timers are getting back into the game. It is the multitasking, after all, that uh, gave them their... There are many accolades over the years. This just looks incorrect, no? Well, uh, once they realize there's really nothing they can do about it anymore because this is a building that can't lift. This just looks stupid. All right, let's uh, actually hop into the old timers uh, communication channel and see what they have to say. Unless you think you can do damage with them, but I guess we do need to trade some supply for the Liberator Sun. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, I just needed some uh, some medic in my army, otherwise I'm a bit scared. Like a stalk running to the third base. Losses are here on, on the bottom. Okay. I'm gonna take the medic that has just spawned. Yeah. Don't he has like almost the entire fire. army here. So yeah. he shouldn't have that much at the top. Create some supplies so I can make lips whenever possible. Uh-huh. Painful little flank there as uh, Showtime's army gets... Well, kind of... Well, actually, Showtime's gonna win that fight. That's a crazy good fight. And now there might be potential. Where are the Vikings? Vikings are coming in. There's not too many Stalkers in this army. There's only three Disruptors. And none of these Disruptors have shots. What a great fight here for the old-timers. Absolutely going to be crushing this fight. Immortals going down. Colossi falling as well. At the same time, Showtime still going ham on the top side with that army. Takes out the Nexus. Oi, oi, oi. The Protoss team is getting absolutely destroyed here team coffee letting it slip out of their hands 3-1 upgrades against 3-2 beautiful fight here showtime still controlling that army like his life depends on it and it might just i wish we had heart rate monitors right now because this is getting scary for these oldies let me tell you that much they can't stand this much excitement they're up 60 supply and they're about to push for taking game number four tanks finally come on siege these guys haven't seen action for a very, very long time. Even longer than the average StarCraft 2 player. And now, oi, 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 oi. They're coming into action and they're ready, my friends. They're gonna shoot their shot. This ghost, can it EMP something? I am not so sure. Ooh, ooh, uh, flank. Where's all the bio, actually? I feel like we're, we're lacking some bio right now. This is a nice army, but it's all kind of these specialist units. You have a bunch of tanks, a bunch of... Well, actually, this army is super strong. What am I complaining about? These old timers sure do know how to craft an army comp. Bottom side is getting, well, not really harassed. There's a pylon there staring uh, intensely at that base, wishing it also could do damage like a planetary. Inferiority complex right there. This Liberator's not being too useful. Tank will well, catch one disruptor shot, but they can catch one disruptor shot without dying. Another disruptor shot hits a different tank. We do have that range yet, but it's not really being utilized at this moment. Tanks, uh, once again, gonna get shot at. EMP hits. Oh my god, the damage output of this army is just too much. GG gets called. Elaser, Max Specs, and Uthermal leave this game. And the show is all tied up 2-2. Two two, and we'll be heading into our final game of the final best of five. This grand final. The Hearthstone Archon Tour. Nice. Cool, boys. Good job, good job. And we owned them. You fucking <laughs> destroyed them, man. I was a bit worried when the push completely failed, but we yeah. had a lot of probes, I think. Hey, we just we just lost the 1v1 games, really. The Our team play is on point. Yeah. But now we're back to the 1v1, maybe. TVT. No, no, make it a 3v3, please. Um, yeah, I, I guess you have to go Phoenix. It's just very hard to defend all the that. Yeah, I think we also could have played the Archons, maybe, instead of Colossus and try to hit the timing. You mean set an arc on a stalker attack? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Like just with three guys or four. Yeah, I think disruptors and cause are worse if they can micro like that. Yeah, they have six hands. <laughs> yeah. That's tough. All right, TVT it is. Like, I can see what the laser is doing. Like on the left, he just has two disruptors. 100% it's a laser. He has two disruptors, five stalkers. He doesn't realize those units just die by themselves. <laughs> 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 so if we force a longer game with some multitasking, a laser is going to throw away some units. That's yeah. how we get them. 
I think them throwing a lot of zealots here and there helped a yeah, lot. Yeah, but it's just this is typical max specs, right? He likes to throw units everywhere for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's like legitimately ten zealots. Perfect decider matchup. I You're better than Diego in this matchup, right? Well, yeah, I guess, but like it's I don't know, it's TVT. Like I, I usually just play relaxed. I'm trying to think of a build that's good for TVT when we have um, a little hands. Like we should definitely play something aggressive. I think. Uh, I need uh, one moment. I'll be right back. Yeah, sure. What do you want to veto? Uh, we have Curious Minds Hardwire 2k left. Uh, definitely not Curious Minds. So either between Hardwire or 2k, probably Hardwire. And if they veto Hardwire, get 2k. One second, I'm gonna go. No, no, v, v, v veto. All oh, right, yeah, veto Curious we, Minds. We... For sure. Good map. I hate it. I guess we're gonna have to play Atmospheres, which is literally the most standard map in TVT ever. Why? Why? Because, uh, like... Didn't I say why? I said uh, all right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like hard hardwire usually just makes for very campy long games and atmosphere is just like it's also pretty campy to be honest, but it's kinda in between. One thing I'm thinking of is normal where are you here, Nico? Mm -hmm. Like normally you play Raven Viking, but like honestly there's there you know, there's no benefit. I feel like maybe it's better to actually just play Medivax instead. So you guys can run around with drops at least. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. If we dumb plays mech, then it's gonna kill almost any anything we can do, I feel like. Well, to add, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how he plays mech. I figured he would try to attack at some point. I think mech, you just camp and then you make uh, BCs, if I remember correctly. Oh, I thought he was going to all in with tanks. Well, that's possible too, I guess. Because if he just wanted to camp, we probably would not have without Curious, right? Mm. Yeah, the, the thing is, Diego's kind of crazy. He's like a YOLO Terran in TVT. So I, I can't do anything that's too greedy. What if you, like, cheese him? Cheese him? Yeah. I mean, I could, but like Diego is, is the one always playing aggressive, so I guess he, he should be a bit better in that. Like the thing is, I, I would like to play my standard build, but there would almost honestly be like nothing to do for you guys. So I don't know if, this, if it's the right fit. You could well, actually, well, what do you mean? Do you like stay AFK at home or what? Yeah, so what I do is I make five Reapers and three Hellions, and then I attack with them, but it's just one group. It's not like harassment. And then after that, you, you just macro up for a bit, you know, Raven Viking tank, and then you go to the late game. But I do, think that. The do that, do that, do that. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Okay. I beat good turn of races sometimes in TVT whenever they play mech. And what I do is I just mass expand like a Zerg and with only orbitals. Then they camp and I just go air transition and win uh, super easy. We can do something like that, and it's probably legit because, like, okay. if both of us are microing, I don't think Kellyan Runbase can really. Hey, uh, how does he play mech? Is he like camping, or is he gonna attack yeah, with it? Player mech. So he just camps forever, and then does a tank push, or does he camp forever and then play? Camp forever, and then do a push at 180. Oh. He has two pushes: one with like uh, at 180 supply, and then if that doesn't kill, he goes for a second one with doors and widow mines. Sounds fantastic. So can we base trade against that? Or it should be pretty uh, good to have like two armies on the map, no? Whenever yeah, you usually out. you leave all the tanks at home. Uh, if he plays mag, I'll probably play two factory tanks. So we have like a shit ton of tanks to defend his push. And then you guys just keep uh, one double drop on each side. And as soon as he moves out, you hit two bases. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Then you control the Hellion Reaper? Mm, I mean, I could. Actually, I think one of you could probably do it too, because mo most of the time you just kind of like they have enough and then you poke and you go back, you know, like it's oh. pretty rare you would actually go in. So, okay. or maybe, maybe, maybe I'll just, I'll initiate the attack. And then if I go back, then I'll give you, you guys the units. That yeah. sounds better. Yeah. And then at the start, um, yeah, so I'm just going to make Reaper, Hellion, and then all you guys have to do is just scout around a little bit, but not, not too much, just like right around the base. That's pretty much all you guys have to do at the start. Let's proxy Reaper and be done with this. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you control the Reapers. <laughs> no, that's, that's not going to go well. <laughs> that's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we did it against uh, Piotr, we would have destroyed them as well. Yeah. yeah, but that guy, I mean, he did one Rex expand no scout. I'm honestly tempted to do a medivac build, to just have you guys babysit one of the medivacs, but you have to promise not to lose it to a Cyclone. No, it's not a good idea. I think medivac builds are also, yeah. You're good if you keep the medevac alive because then yeah, guy always has to keep you. Like I, d I don't know the unit interactions in the early game with the when mm. I can win the fights. I don't know if Showtime does. Not really. I mean, I used to play the medevac stuff. Isn't that the where you put like the Reaper and the Hellion and the Mine into it or whatever? Is it that one? Yeah, that's the that's one of them. I mean, like I, I, I played it and I always just uh, suicide all my shit and then I was behind, so <laughs> I don't know if I should do that. Yeah. Okay. Take turn, and then we go. We are here, ladies and gentlemen, in the final game of the final series of the Hearthstone Archon Tour. It's game number five, as both teams only have their Terran life remaining. 
Good luck, have fun coming out of Team Coffee. And once again, we get that, that, that cold shoulder treatment out of the old timers. Afraid perhaps that if they type too much that their fingers might break off, of course, from that old age. You do get a little bit, uh, you know, the bones get a bit more frail. Only Kalazur still has that youthful spirit where he can type out words. So, uh, barracks. Ooh, it's going to be... No, barracks first for both teams. I was hoping for a gas first here for a second. Uthermal and uh, Kalazur, which are going to be the main players here, are very well aware of each other's styles. They uh, play in Team Liquid, both of them. And they often discussed about TVT in the past, I know, because I was also part of Team Liquid. So I, 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 know, I know a little bit. I know a little bit about them. I do know a little bit about them. And uh, we see two double gas openers here. I know Kalazur has a very specific type of style where he likes to get a quicker second barracks than the opponent and surprise them with a bit of a stim timing. As the, the most common thing in this matchup actually is to open up with a fast third CC, but Kalazur just has a has a twist on that majority of the time. We'll see if that's going to end up uh, paying off here or if he's even going to go for it, of course. It's still a possibility. The only team scouting right now is Team Coffee. As we see, the old-timers, they know everything already. They're oh so wise. They will not require a scout. And let's listen in to their, uh, their actual communication channel as well of the old-timers right now. Here's what these guys talk about. At 6k, people are so bad at controlling the Reaper. I hold it with one Rex expand, no scout. <laughs> Does it look like it's proxy, so... But I'll, I'll scout it. Scouting for proxies with that first Reaper immediately. After seeing that scout timing, perhaps uh, being a little bit paranoid. And, uh, we actually see the same thing coming out of Team Coffee. Although they scouted the barracks at home, of course, it's still possible that a second barracks is proxied. CC goes down on the low ground a bit faster because there was no scout for the old timers. They just have slightly more money. That's going to pay off in a quicker CC timing. Uh, oh, there's also slightly more gas, by the way, for Team Coffee. So that's probably another reason. Is there slightly more gas? No. Actually, that's not true. It had to do with how the Reaper and the Reactor interacted. Well, maybe there is. And there's no starport yet. For neither player, though. Or for neither team, I should say. Excuse me, as the port first goes down on the side of the old timers. Third depot is about to finish up as well. So the command centers are getting close to finishing. This is a typical U thermal build here. It will be a five Reaper, three Hellion. And we'll see what he does from there, but that's going to be the start. Oh, we see a fast mine here for uh for Kalazur's opener immediately into that tech lab and more marines being built as well where will that mine be burrowed the mine will be burrowed here not on top of any ramp no just for safety in this exact spot two more reapers on the way like i mentioned it's going to be an eight unit move out and the question is will this be a tank or a cyclone if this is a tank they could be in trouble because the tank takes slightly longer to come out and with the Cyclone, of course, it's out faster, but it's less useful against the eight units because it can just kill one unit very fast and then it will need to use its auto attack on the next one. Are we going to see a Banshee here? Or is this just going to be a Raven anyway? Nah, most likely should be a Raven. There we go. Raven gets built and here comes the move out. This is a uh, oh, possibly a decisive moment in this game and thus in this series. And because of that, also in this tournament. Oh, three units a little bit too far forward. Do we see... Oh, Hellion is going to tank. Oh, splash damage hits that Reaper. Mine will fall. Oh, good grenades being used here for both players. It seems so far that the fight is going well, though. For Team Coffee. Getting the better end of the trade so far. But now, with the Cyclone arriving to the scene, it comes to the rescue. Two Reapers and a Mine end up falling on the side of the old timers and a single hellion as well as a reaper fall on the side of team coffee now the problem for team coffee is is that these reapers they do not really gain value over time actually they get worse over time a reaper in the first three minutes is great a reaper uh, anything after minute five might as well not exist um, might as well be brought out of its existence it's just a waste of supply and most of the time will not be able to achieve much of anything there's one more thing that they can be used for and that is for a potential counter attack Ooh, or for keeping some type of map control i guess as uh, we still see that fight for map control of course tank into raven oh actually there's already a, a cyclone out and unlike in other matchup this uh, cyclone is actually going to be able to do something either denying ravens fighting banshees but even uh helping 
aiding in keeping map control and of course as well pushing back vikings later on in the game there is a possibility by the way that we're going to be seeing mech out of team coffee i know you thermal is fond of mech the fourth gas is going down and there's already 300 gas in the bank this looks like a third raven to me it feels like a third raven to me mm -hmm. excuse me okay okay reactor being built here on the starport so it's going to be bio against bio we didn't see the fast second barracks either like i uh, said that we might see out of the old timers and i'm curious to see what the old timers think about the current position as uh, well they just don't have that much info is he gonna go in with the reaper now possible can't Seems like they don't have too much to say. <laughs> they start landing their third base. I think I heard uh, Showtime murmur the word scan there, and that was about it. This will be... Uh, <laughs> I guess they're going to be pushing away the super. That's a crap ton of Marines, by the way. 18 Marines. There's four tanks here. And triple Ravens against just two Ravens. Uh, that might have been a bit of a waste on that Cyclone. Uh, that interference matrix. That's a lot of energy that you're not going to be seeing back. But perhaps otherwise that Raven would have died. And that's what the Cyclone often is very good at. As these units are trying to move into position. Oh, Cyclone in the back. Almost getting a kill there. That was a, a free tank shot. Oh. Team Coffee perhaps in a bit of trouble. Thanks now. Moving forward. Inching forward I should say. That Raven is going to fall. No. Oh. Oh. It got. It got killed before a single shot got fired. I didn't even know that was possible. I thought when it locked on, it immediately did damage. That's a one tank and a one cyclone loss, though. First Vikings moving forward. Oh, this is a good move here. The old timers. Slowly, patiently. Moving forward. That's surprising because... Well, they're, they're running out of time. Well, in their life, at least. So, being this patient is... Uh, is interesting. They believe that this is the quickest way to victory. It might just be true. There's a lot of units being rallied across the map right now. It's two Ravens against one. There's no real energy left, though. Medivax as the first two units. Air superiority will remain forever with the old-timers. These guys know how to use a Viking here. These tanks are moving forward. Of course, the sensor tower is being super helpful here in figuring out what the opponent is doing with that tank movement. So this CC is in trouble. That CC needs to lift. Do we have a counter-attack? Oh yeah, we do have a counter-attack. That's what, seven marines? Is Stim finished yet? Stim is finished. Here comes the Stim in. Quick SCV pool, though. That's going to save a lot of these workers. There's a little bit of a big migration happening here from Team Coffee. 140 supply against 125. This game might be able to just stabilize, but it's an action-packed one already. Medifax making their way across the map as well. 1-1's about to finish up. That 1-1 is way faster for you, Turbo. <laughs> Medivac's gonna stay alive. Three Vikings, double volley in Medivac. Don't forget that. Six Vikings, one shot of Medivac. Actually, maybe five Vikings, one shot of Medivac already. <gasps> that was a great interference matrix once again. And another tank falls. Beautiful moves here. That's definitely Kellas who are doing that. 1-1 one, one is finished, however. But, well, the drop never really arrived on the other side of the map. Combat shield is not done yet for either player. 2-2 two, two starting quicker as well here for Team Coffee. But what do upgrades do if you're down 30 supply? Another tank getting taken out. Unit lost. Three tanks already have fallen. Four tank, fourth tank is going to fall here as well. Only a single tank has fallen on the side of the old timers. Fort CC already being built. And a marine drop here at the third as well. Taking out a lot of SCVs right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're scrambling to put a defense together. But it's not quite working. Down 40 supply. Triple drop heading towards this base. There's two tanks. And, well, that's it. No. There's a couple of marines in the back as well. This marine drop is not quite going to cut it. It's going to walk into a couple of tank shots. Need to go for the lift immediately and go back home. As this is just not going to be it. Another tank is going to get blasted here. The patience with this tank movement out of Kallus or out of uh, the old timers has been fascinating to watch and establish them a very large lead the question is can they finish it can they i think they might just be able to finish it there's still no vikings inside here as this tank is going to get pushed back of course team coffee can't scan forever either 
And they do need to scan forever because tanks moving forward, even without an interference matrix, might be really dangerous. Tanks are going to unseach probably pretty quickly. Another medevac gets sniped. Good movement. Couple of tanks coming towards the right side as well. No sensor tower here. And that means that this position is now officially given up. And with this position, well, well at least this gets blasted. That's nice, but... Yeah, the right side so vulnerable, so many SEVs going down. Well, there's still on this side of the map. Well, there's a couple of Marines in the main trying to hide themselves even to catch this drop. And it almost succeeds, but not quite. Yeah, 15 SEVs going down the drain. 4CC is up and running. And this fifth base is getting closer and closer to the end. Let's tune into the voice chat of these beautiful old timers. Do they feel the win? Can they taste the win? It's like in the fault measurement. Yeah, he's coming here. He's right now here, I think. He's doom dropping. He's going all out. Can you guys defend us? Mm hmm. Show them. Can, 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 can you, you come here? And... Come here to the th uh, third base. He's going to the third base. Oh, okay. You can. Main base, main base, main base. Marines. Exciting little drop here as everyone seems extremely focused. Tanks do end up sieging actually in the main base and although they saw it coming, it's still a problem here. No way, is Team Coffee doing it? Look at the army supply here, 2-2 two, two against 1-1 one, one as well. Tanks sieged in the main base, they're in the production. Team Coffee's production is safe. Is this the comeback of a lifetime? 2-2 two, two is about to finish though here for the old timers. Just reacting a little bit too slow it seems like four tanks against four tanks marine count in favor of team coffee that's the only thing that matters because there's no more production so eco is completely meaningless at this point these two tanks are so important though and providing vision with that medevac up here at the same time the natural is still mining the third base is still alive though i can't believe what a turnaround that doom drop got spotted all the way over here it made it into the main base poor defensive moves here out of showtime and lambo are possibly going to cost this game are the new barracks being built the answer is no we see callus you're still pushing with this tank army for it might be able to actually kill this base no not quite oh very can careful tank positioning marines moving for it every last building is dying right now there is a viking with this army providing a lot of vision there's a liberator on the way if this viking dies that could be the key to success but this viking needs to freaking die if this viking does not die that will be a massive issue. I'm surprised we don't see a single Viking being built. Just two Liberators. Factory on the way. More barracks being built as well. Income still in favor here of the old timers. This game makes absolutely no sense. As a single Marine with five kills. Now taking out a mule. Gets his sixth kill. Liberators take out the air. And that means that this party will come to an end. But the party of the old timers might also come to an end. Ooh, actually. No way. Five Marines and a dream. Five Marines and a dream. Oh, the old timer's gonna get cleaned up here. As this high ground position is uh, painting them. They still have more eco though. Barracks are being produced once again. But uh, 50 workers against 37s. Liberator moving in position will be able to take out maybe one of these tanks actually. At least get one shot off. <laughs> Not quite. A couple of marines will fall. Big marine count is moving forward. Single medevac here for the old timers against the four. <clears throat> oh man, these medevacs are so ridiculously low as well. This game has been absolutely bonkers. This is a game 5 worthy material, that's for sure. Ooh, a couple of marines getting a bit ballsy. How many tanks do it? A single tank. Single tank, two liberators. That is what we have. 72 marines though. Oh, here comes the stim. The stim for it. Is this going to be it? Tank in the back, dishing out a fair amount of damage, but it's not going to be enough. The army supply is double. The production is getting cleared. Yes, there is Medivacs, but there is nothing to heal right now. The tanks are sieging up. Infantry weapons level 3 will finish up as well at the same time. An army on the left side. We see a scan. And but this has to be it. Now I truly believe that this is over. I thought it was over two, three times already this game. But now we get our confirmation. GG gets called. And we have our winner's team. The smell of coffee in the morning. Or waking up to the smell of coffee wins the Harstam Archon Tour 3-2 to two in the finals against the old-timers. Oh my god. <laughs> we were the best. <laughs> King of the mirror matchups. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, like, in, in PvP, more than in any other matchup, if you have, like, one more upgrade, it's actually insane. Mm -hmm. So when I got into the main plus tanks, oh my. Oof. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a, a real good no, move. Boys. <laughs> nice, man, I'm so happy. Hello, boys.
Yes. Hey, man. Hello, con- con- congratulations with your huge win. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. A co- couple of questions. First of all, the, the first... Uh, well, let's not even talk about the first series. Let's just talk about this series. How, how, how did it feel to win? Be the ultimate winner of the Harstam Arkham Tour. I think it's great. Like, it's honor. Honestly, I was just satisfied with the run, but like the last game just made it so much better. Because I already accepted defeat, pretty much. <laughs> it was very over. It was, it, was, yeah. it was very over. They even saw the drop leave. Like, I, yeah. I was just in their communication. They was like, the drop is coming. And then Showtime and Lambo were doing the defense. They but... all thought they're going to defend it. Like, they all thought somebody's going to defend it, and then nobody did. <laughs> <laughs> this was beautiful. What a it, was, it was quite a game. What about the, the Phoenix game? Any any words about that? Uh, Max yeah, Park, sorry. <laughs> I don't have any words. I just got lucky with uh, getting in with the carriers. And I, yeah, I knew he would, uh, like, when, when you're aggressive with the Phoenix, the opponent will make a Phoenix to defend. So you can uh, get a carrier rather safely. So mm-hmm. my plan was just getting two carriers and make Phoenix, because I, I also thought he would make carriers after some time himself, and uh, I got a lucky timing to say it. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Well, also, the micro before, I think it started with, like, 15 against 15 Phoenixes, and after, like, five or six exchanges, you were up five Phoenixes. Like, you just traded better, and I have no clue how that happened. Yeah, I was I very feel, surprised. I feel very confident with my uh, micro Phoenix. Yeah, it seems to be the case. I don't think my micro is that good. Yeah, it, it seems fantastic today. Any words in the, the PVT on Berlingrad that, that kind of didn't go as well as planned? I think you guys had a really good position after the mid game, but mm-hmm. then one bad fight and yikes. Yeah, I think, first of all, we probably had the wrong composition for Arkham, to be honest. Yeah. Because the like, Colossus uh, Disruptor is not really good. Like, the Terran actually just controlled the map. It was very hard to do anything. And then I made some mistakes on the left side. Like, I threw away, probably throughout the game, I lost like. 10 Stalkers, 10 Zealots, like 2 Disruptors for no reason. So that's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah maybe should have gone uh, Immortals. Immortals? Yeah. yeah it's something that yeah. we can just aim with and run around. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so no, no, no big units that are like we are all scared to use, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm too scared to like move with uh, War Prism or a Disruptor on the map. Yeah, it was uh, rough. Well, I will, I will leave you guys to it. Big congratulations to winning the Hearthstone Archon Tour. And uh, any final words? Thank you for hosting. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would advertise my YouTube, but since it's on your YouTube, it feels a bit weird. Yeah, you're allowed to do what you want. Hey, can you smell the coffee, Kevin? I can smell the coffee, <laughs> even though I didn't just wake up. I, that's a, it's a great, it's a great name for a team.